How are we doing guys? Matt here with Chaos Art and uh, welcome to another After Effects tutorial. So today in this one we're going to be going over how to do a audio spectrum um, in layman's terms. Basically what that is is um, audio lines that react to audio. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen it on um, popular programs as in uh, iTunes, maybe on with the Zune or something like that, maybe on your iPod you've seen it. Uh, maybe even on like Pandora and things like that, it has it on there as well. Um, so it's just a cool little technique that you can use. It's really, it's really fun and it looks really nice within After Effects. So uh, here's an example of it. I'm going to play that for you right now and uh, we'll jump into it. Alright, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. That's just a little kind of sequence that I made for myself, just something really quick. It was to a dubstep song, and uh, it, it, the dubstep kind of made it look really funky and really crazy. Uh, if you have more of like a clean like drum and bass kind of song, it'll look really good. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. The first thing that you need to do is create a new composition. What you need to do is get a composition, new composition. That is Command N or Control N on your keyboard. We're to name this one Main Comp. This little technique that I use, I create a main composition, then I make a sub composition for all of my contents. Okay, and I'm going to make another one. This is for personal use. You can make one or as many as you want. It does not matter. I'm going to name this one Audio Lines. There we go. So now that we have this, next thing you want to do is create a solid. What a solid is, is basically a, a solid. It's a layer that covers your entire um, area, your work area. And it's whatever color you choose, but it does not matter what color it is. Because what we're going to do is replace the color with the effect that we're trying to create. So you can press Command Y, Control Y, or get a comp or, uh, sorry layer, New, Solid. And you should see it right here. You should get the exact same menu. It may not necessarily be black, but everything else should look the same. I'm going to name this one Audio Lines. Nope. There we go. U D I O L I N E S. There we go. So now you can see my background was black, but there is a black uh, black box here. You can kind of see with the squares, the edges of it, and tell there is one there. And we have a layer down here named Audio Lines. So the next thing that we want to do is go to our effects and presets. Uh, that is located on the right side of my screen. It may be somewhere else for you. Um, otherwise, with the default settings, it should be located right here on the right side as well. Just go to your search box and type in Audio. And you should get two options. This is within the default version of After Effects. There are two options, Audio Spectrum and Audio Waveform. Uh, both of these do pretty much the same thing. Uh, Audio Spectrum has a few more options than Audio Waveform does, and that's what we're going to be using today. So just click and drag it over to your layer. Make sure it's on Audio Lines. If you have multiple layers, what you can do is drag it from here down to your layer down here where it says Audio Lines, as long as it's unlocked. So now we have this here on our screen. And you can adjust the size immediately on this, uh, the, hor yes, the horizontal size of it. We have these two dots right here on the left and the right hand side. You can just click those and drag them to however far out you want. I'm going to put them out here to the edge of my screen, both of them. And you can hold down, show. You can hold down shift and uh, make sure that it stays within the horizontal region. There we go. I accidentally deleted mine and brought it back. I need to line this up again. I kind of hit a couple of wrong keys and it threw it off. There we go. Everything's back where it needs to be. And um, you sh should still look something very similar to this. Uh, the first thing that you need to do also is import a audio file. Whether that is a video or a song, either one will work for you. Just make sure that you have it within After Effects and you import it to this composition. I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. Just file, import, file. And then mine should go to, there we go, other videos that I have right here. I want to change this one to, let's use vectors. Vectors, open. There we go. So now we have, I have my vectors video in here. You can import anything that you please, it does not matter. I'm just going to click that, bring it down below our audio lines. Does not matter how big it is, does not matter if it's visible or if the audio is even playing. And as long as you have the file imported, it will work for you. So I'm not going to worry about resizing it or anything like that. I'm just going to turn off the audio and the video. 
So now there's nothing there other than our audio lines. So we get, need to go back to the audio lines layer, effect controls, change from audio layer to from audio lines to vectors.mov. Whatever your other file may be that has audio on it is what you need to select here that you want it to be based off of. So now whenever there's audio coming out of this layer, it will react to this layer. I'm going to bring this back a little bit to have me talking. I usually have a little bit of a delay in it. Hmm. There we go. Okay, I must have taken a really long delay with that one. Alright, so you can see right here that I have a couple lines bumping up, and it starts, it looks okay. You know, we can do a lot more with it. So the next thing that we want to work with is our maximum height. Default is 480. I like to push mine up between 1,000 and 2,000. Um, what that helps you do is see the lines a lot better. It makes them a lot larger and a lot easier to work with and see. So I'm going to put this one on 1,500. There we go. It basically doubled the size of the lines. And if that's still not big enough for you, you can make it much bigger than that. Next thing that we want to work with is the an amount of lines that we have here. The frequency bands is what it's called. Um, each individual line here is a frequency band, and currently we only have 64. I want to push this up to about 175. Uh, for a composition in 1080p, 175 generally makes it the correct size, It's with width at least. Um, it puts the maximum amount of lines in there without them overlapping and looking very bad. You can make this less or more if you please. I try, try to keep mine between 150 and 200. So now that we have this, you can see it even better with all the lines and the way that the audio is working with it. So we have a couple more options over here that we haven't went over yet. And I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down and we can talk about each one. So you have your start point and end point. That's what we're messing with here, the start point and the end point. I try to leave those alone. You can always click on it and change it to wherever you please. Don't like it there. Let's just press Command Z and take that back. Then you have your end point. You can see right there. So I'd like to leave those exactly where they are. You have your path. I'll leave mine on none because I'm not working with a pin tool to give it a path. i use polar path. That is based off of your path as well. I don't have any paths, so it's not going to do anything. Start frequency. It's starting the frequency at 20. I generally try to leave that alone as well. You can change it to whatever you want. It's just going to start at where your frequency is going to start at. So the lower you make it, the farther this way it'll be. The higher you make it, the farther this way it'll be. So I'm going to push mine back on 20. There we go. And especially in this video, since my voice is kind of deeper, it's going to stay on the left side of the uh, left side of the frequency band more than the right side. Just due to my voice being deeper, if you have a song with lots of highs and lows in it, it'll look a lot better and a lot more uniform. So the next thing we have is frequency bands. We've already went over this. And then end frequency, which is all the way over here, 2000. So it starts at 20 and it ends at 2000. If you wanted to take this down, you could do 200. And you can see that it gives you this little margin to work with right here. 2000 is going to give you that optimal look. A lot of these controls, too, you can mess around with for your specific audio and try to come up with a new style for it as well. So we have maximum height, 1500. We've already talked about this. Audio duration, I'd try to leave mine at 90. Pretty much what it's going to do is as your duration of your audio, how long it's going to stay on there for you. So if I put this back at 90, you can see that it'll stay on there for as long as my audio is playing. You can kind of see it there, the movement of it. There we go. Leave it there. Then we have our audio offset. I'll leave it at zero. Don't want it to be offset of the audio itself. Uh, just a little technique that there is to use with that. Um, nothing that I really recommend using or I try to use myself, but I'm sure it could be useful in some cases. Thickness is the individual thickness of each line on here. We have 175 lines. I try to leave mine at about three. If you wanted to take this down to, let's say, 100, and you wanted to bump the th thickness up to six, you can see it's much thicker and it gives you a lot different look. It may look better in uh, certain scenarios that you're trying to work with, but for this one right here, I'm just going to take mine back down to 3 and put this up at 175 again. There we go. Let's try to find a good place. There we go. That's a good one. Then you have your softness, 50%. It's just the softness of your lines. You can put it at 100%, or you can put it at 0%. So. 
that is the softness and that also affects your color as well so let me put this back up to 50 actually let me put this yeah 50 will be fine for now so now we can mess with our color um, everybody loves colors that's why you're doing this video just for the colors at least I hope so so um, in this one you have two different color options you have inside color and outside color if you were to zoom in on here and let me take this down to 100 oh, 100 and then put this up around 6 again or let's see if I can do 10 uh, it's much better you'll be able to see that there are two different colors on here when I change it inside color is what you think it is the color of the inside outside color is a stroke Oh, excuse me, there's a stroke around it. So the outside color, let's make this a really bright color. You can tell what it is. Bright blue. There we go. So if we come out here, you can kind of see that it gives you a really cool effect and it almost makes it look like it's glowing, especially if you have really good complementary colors and uh, you can create a really cool audio spectrum out of that. Then you have blend overlapping colors. What this does is if your thickness is way too large, and they happen to overlap, you can just have them blend together and it creates a really, really cool appearance too of having multiple colors within the same image other than the two that you chose. Hue interpolation, uh, probably pronounced that wrong, so don't correct me on that. Good luck trying to pronounce it yourself. Uh, for the longest, I thought it said interpretation, but it doesn't. Uh, hue interpolation, I try to leave it alone as well something that don't really like to mess with what it's going to do is change the hue and saturation of your of your spectrum you can see that it creates a really cool effect but in my personal use i haven't had a chance to use it yet so you can almost create a uh, a rainbow effect with it so as long as you change this but if you just want to have your two colors you can always change it up to zero just zero it out and it'll give you the two colors that you chose then you have dynamic hue phase which will affect your hue interpolation. You can see, well, it's not showing up anything here. Oh, there we go. It'll change the colors. Uh, definitely with the dynamic hue phase on, it'll give you a lot more mild colors that kind of blend a little bit better. Without it, it's a lot crazier and a lot brighter. Uh, color symmetry, just another one of those options. You can have it if you want it. Don't necessarily need it. It kind of helps you keep a, uh, an even tone color across it. It makes it fade very smoothly, just like the dynamic hue phase does. Um, one, one of those things, you know, you can always put a ramp on this if you please as well to do the same thing. I'm going to turn that on and put this back up to zero. Next option, one of the most popular options on here, is the type of lines that you can have on here. Currently, we're on digital. You have two other options, analog lines and analog dots. Analog lines appears to be much like a heartbeat. Um, so you can see right here as I play, it gives you a very interesting look. Uh, it's, it's almost kind of raspy looking, I think, but it's also really, really cool if you're doing some sort of, uh, maybe like a heartbeat appearance and you would never think to use a song to create that. So, I mean, it's just one of those options as well. Then you have analog dots. Just like analog lines, they're going to push up and down and it is really, really cool. So a lot of times what I like to do, and in the video that you saw, I will combine these. I'll create two different layers, one with analog dots and one with analog lines. So you can see both of them reacting to each other. And the way that I did that is I set them up on side A for the dots, and then I had analog line or digital lines below it. Just move this up a couple pixels. It's a cool effect. So as you can see, I just did that. You can change from side A, side B, or side A and B. What this is going to do, side A and B just reflects the top on the bottom. And uh, side A, of course, is just the top. Side B is just the bottom. And these can be changed for each individual layer. It doesn't won't affect each other, but it just gives you several different options to which side you want it on so you don't have to do manual mirroring. Then you have duration. Cool, cool effects. Uh, I don't really like to mess with duration too much. Uh, that's actually really cool looking. Uh, normally I don't get any of that like look that cool so you guys kind of got lucky on that one so let's try to find a good place there we go just turn that off and then we have composite on origin which obviously isn't going to do anything for this one and it's just another one of those options that you can kind of mess around with composite on origin 
it's kind of going to mess around with the origin of uh, the audio, like wherever it's initially coming from, it's going to affect it that way. So you can turn them both on or you can turn them both off. That is the coolest looking thing I've seen all day. And that's going to be all of your options, guys. So thank you for watching and uh, thanks for all your support. I know it's kind of a quick video. I say this all the time. I try to make, try to make more thorough tutorials for you guys. But um, I really enjoyed this effect. I hope you'll really enjoy this effect. And please let me know what you think. Let me know if I helped you out. A lot of these options are very scenario specific, so it's kind of difficult for me to explain all of them in this one scenario. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to message me, and I'll respond to all of them, and I'll be able to help you out to the best of my ability. So thanks again, and I uh, hope this helped you out a lot.